Good morning, everybody. Um, Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Magdis Daba, um, leaders uh, of the Ministry of Health and other ministries um, across Ethiopia and partner countries. Um, Professor uh, Yamana Berhan, who is our host and director of Addis Continental uh, Institute of Public Health. Uh, colleagues from UNICEF uh, and uh, other multinational organizations, representatives of adolescent groups, um, colleagues and friends from the academic community in Africa, across Europe and the United States, uh, all protocol observed. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here this morning, uh, an honor to uh, be with you all um, in Addis Ababa, the capital of Africa. Um, I feel I'm at home. I was born not very far from here um, in, in Khartoum, in Sudan, and really an honor to be with um, friends and partners from um, many African countries and from colleagues around the world. I was asked to speak briefly about uh, celebrating 10 years of the Arise Network. Uh, uh, it has been really a wonderful effort to come together about 10 years ago. It started in Boston with partners from um, uh, many countries to grow to where we are today. We are 22 institutions, you're right, this uh, has been corrected. Uh, we are 22 uh, with the addition of a 10th partner country in Senegal more recently. Um, honored and pleased to have many of the founders of that effort uh, with us here today. Um, and uh, our colleagues from the Africa Academy who are co-convening this with, with us uh, in um, uh, advancing uh, research, implementation, science, and education. Over time, um, we've had a number of sessions um, and a number of meetings, once, twice a year uh, over these past 10 years, and they are noted here. Um, uh, many more than what is noted on the slide, really. Uh, many meetings that happen perhaps monthly or, or at times even weekly uh, to advance our various uh, efforts happening in different parts around the continent and beyond the continent. There are three pillars to the efforts of the uh, ARISE network. Um, we do cutting edge research together uh, on key global health priorities. Uh, we advance capacity building and training of uh, the rising uh, leaders of uh, our field. Um, but we do that really as partnership between various institutions and sectors. We focus on a number of initiatives. Um, we started thinking about this really on the first time we met in 2014. What are the various opportunities that we can harness together? And there are many. Um, maternal and child health has been always a central element of our efforts. Uh, infectious diseases and NCDs, including mental health, has been uh, an aspect that we are trying to advance as well. Increasingly keen on contributing to food systems and climate change as uh, a rising challenge to many of us, many countries around the world. But closest to our heart really, and the area that have sort of taken a lot of our efforts together is around adolescent health. And we're so glad that we have uh, representatives of the youth uh, here with us today and they have informed our ideas and initiatives as we went along. Adolescents are, uh, and young people are a big segment of the population as uh, the minister has noted, uh, at least a quarter of the world. In sub-Saharan Africa, even 70% of the population is under the age of 30. There are many reasons why we have focused on this. Um, certainly the population size is a, is, is a key element, but it's also um, the future of the world, as um, Minister uh, Magdus has noted. Um, we are keen on advancing with adolescents their health and well-being today. It's important for them today. It's important for their lifelong um, opportunities that they can afford and important for the next generation, their own families as they um, sort of get to that stage as well. Within the last 10 years, there are a number of milestones. Some of them are noted here uh, briefly. Um, starting from 2014, we have really advanced a number of initiatives around um, convenings to address key adolescent health issues, um, uh, all the way to uh, this sort of time today where we have, um, in 2024, 
the first adolescent health conference that we are launching together. Within research, uh, we advance that effort uh, on three fronts, really, on adolescent health and nutrition, together with many academic institutions, many research organizations, many policymakers, we do systematic reviews of the evidence, gather where we are, what have we achieved already, in order to chart the next way forward. And we do that through observational studies and intervention studies. In um, observational studies, one key element is to really describe the set of conditions that we have today before we are able to move forward to implement uh, interventions. We've done that through a series of um, cross-sectional studies, multi-sectoral um, studies uh, in, in multiple countries of the ARISE network. Uh, and we have moved to do that longitudinally over time to be able to track key indicators um, in the community at population level, but also uh, in the context of schools, which are really important platforms that enable us to reach adolescents. Uh, not everyone is in school, uh, but it is a rising segment of the population. In many parts of the continent, more and more adolescents are in school, and that really provides an important opportunity for us to, to reach adolescents in partnership with the Ministry of Education and education sector um, partners. On, um, as part of the effort, really, uh, as we collect data, a key aspect is to analyze that data, to disseminate it. Um, and we do that through engaging with sort of analysts, young investigators who are rising to be able to learn how to do this. So it's both sort of documenting the state of health and uh, nutrition among adolescents, but also building the capacity of the future generation as that happens in the context of analysis, writing, and publications. There are more than 300 publications that have come out of the ARISE network over the past 10 years, led by many people around the continent. Moving from observational studies to interventions is uh, an aspect that we are keen on. So while we continue to track key indicators over time through observational analysis in schools or in population settings, we are also keen on intervening. So we do more than just sort of study but actually key to uh, engage with adolescents to provide a better way forward for addressing malnutrition uh, and other um, health challenges. These are some of the um, uh, indicators that, uh, or studies that we have advanced. Um, I won't go into each one of them, um, just a, key, a couple of words about some of them. The mega trial was a, a study that we have done in uh, Dodoma, uh, Tanzania, in partnership with um, colleagues at the University of Dodoma, really to sort of look at an integrated approach to uh, improving uh, the state of health and nutrition among adolescents, providing a midday meal, enhancing the curriculum, uh, and providing school garden as, as a means to reach uh, that target. Uh, in the SAMIA trial, it's a, it's, a, it's a set of studies that we have done in Burkina Faso and Tanzania. We looked at the role of micronutrient supplements as a uh, means to enhancing um, hematologic status and reducing the burden of anemia. In Arise Dash and, and nutrient studies in partnership with Heidelberg and many colleagues around um, the continent, these are efforts that uh, advance sort of both capacity building as well as um, knowledge um, discovery pertaining to mental health, sexual and reproductive health, and nutrition in a number of settings around the continent. Beyond research um, in its various forms, we are very keen to build capacity and uh, advance really knowledge um, uh, and leadership among partner institutions. And we do that at, the, at a number of levels. Uh, we have done that in working with development of junior faculty in our academic institutions. Um, Postdoctoral fellowships, uh, and doctoral training and master's training are, are key tracks that we advance. But also through short courses, convene around particular areas of focus from leadership training to methods courses to um, other aspects of um, short courses that bring this to a much larger um, segment of uh, our interested community. We convene in conferences, we do regular seminars, symposia, and webinars. 
Our training efforts are multiple. These are some of them noted here on the screen. Um, uh, we have been doing short-term training in monitoring and evaluation. Um, we're fortunate to have a partnership with Addis Continental on the GID, uh, Global Infectious Disease Training Program. Um, uh, through the HBNU uh, Global Health Research Training Program, these are um, a partnership with um, more than 20 uh, institutions in Africa, Asia, and Latin America with uh, institutions in the north have one-year fellowships that um, enable um, trainees from the north and from the south to come together throughout a year with mentorship from both uh, from both sides. Um, in the second tier, the Washa Taquimo is a partnership with the University of KwaZulu Natal around building capacity in data science methods and its application. And through partnership with UKZN as a hub uh, and Heidelberg as, as a partner. Uh, we also convey and convene with um, partners in the Arise Network, uh, in Tanzania, in Uganda, in Nigeria, uh, and in Ghana, and are keen to expand that to other countries as well. And lastly, uh, an area that we have advanced over, over time is around HIV implementation science uh, in Tanzania uh, and in other settings, and are keen to continue to learn from the HIV experience to advance knowledge about other uh, infectious diseases and other pandemics. Beyond Africa and as an Arise group, we have been really keen to engage with other partners around the world. And one example of that is um, the China Harvard Africa Network. It's a group that brings together partners from China and Chinese universities and policymakers with Arise, which brings us as academia and policymakers on the African continent and Harvard uh, in a way that enables all of us to learn from each other uh, in a south-to-south -south as well as south-to-north opportunity. Um, the way forward is exciting. Beyond the last 10 years, um, uh, there are hopefully many more years and uh, decades to come um, by leaders who are in the room who will um, take over from us and be able to uh, advance sort of the initiative um, around building capacity, around research of many opportunities that uh, still need to be pursued, and doing that really across sectors from health to education to agriculture to um, other domains, engaging with academia, with um, uh, implementation partners, with ministries uh, and with uh, policy makers. And most exciting, the think tank that is being launched today really provides us an opportunity to leverage sort of an agenda around translation that we are very keen uh, on pursuing. There are many people to thank um, for what we have accomplished together uh, over the past 10 years. And um, there are too many, I won't be able to list all the possible names. Some institutions are on the screen, but particular thanks to leaders in government who have been really instrumental, uh, ministries of health, minister of health in Ethiopia, the current minister and uh, your predecessor ministers have been instrumental in supporting us, certainly ministries of education um, in Ethiopia and beyond. To our partners in the multinational community, especially at UNICEF, we're very grateful. I see um, Dr. Stanley Chitekwe and Abdullah Noor and Vilma Tyler uh, from headquarters who have been instrumental in supporting us and other multinational organizations. To adolescents and young people who have allowed us to engage with them and sort of uh, advocate with your input um, for solutions to improve the health and well-being of adolescents. To our donors, um, many of whom uh, enabled us, uh, trusted us to use resources that they provided from foundations at the Gates Foundation, at the Botner Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, um, partners in Europe who have been instrumental in enable, enabling our efforts. Africa Academy for Public Health, uh, that has been convening, co-convening the network, and special thanks to Dr. Mary Monica Sando, uh, the CEO of AAPH, for your leadership uh, and uh, allowing us to advance this uh, as a community. To all the founders of uh, the Arise Network who were there from the very first day, uh, 10 years ago, many of whom are here, um, I will not be able to mention all the names, but just a few, Professor Yamana, um, certainly thank you so much for hosting us today and for all the engagement over the past 10 years. Um, Professor Ayo from Nigeria, and many partners there. Uh, Dr. Adam, 
um, Dr. Professor Richard Adano from Ghana, uh, Dr. Ali C from Burkina, uh, Professor Mosa Moshabela, uh, who is here with us from South Africa, uh, Professor uh, Tobias Chirwe uh, from WITS, uh, Dr. Justine Bukenia uh, from Uganda, uh, and Professor David Guatuda in Abstentia, uh, and, and many other colleagues who are instrumental to uh, where we have arrived at. Um, thank you to all our partners at ACIPH um, this week and for our collaboration that we have had. The organizers, Dr. Hannah Berhan, and the faculty and staff at ACIPH, and to everybody here who um, has been part of this journey and looking forward to the next 10 years at least. Thank you so much. <laughs>